Oh, hi, I didn't see you there, Internet. Today we're going to talk about Ghost Recon Wildlands. Played the beta? Going to give you some thoughts on it. Stay tuned. Okay, Ghost Recon Wildlands Beta came out a couple days ago, and I've been playing it, you know, off and on, not a whole, whole lot. So anything that I'm saying, my opinion on this, isn't necessarily going to be in the final product. So just take that with a grain of salt. But here's a few things that I've noticed during the beta. It's a beta, and it's buggy. There's multiple instances where friends of mine that we were playing with in a party would basically not show that they were in a vehicle. So, you know, when you'd have to extract somebody or, you know, do this or that, you'd be in the environment and you would be, you know, get the guy in the car and then you need to get your squad back in there so you can have some defense and the dude's just standing next to the car and, you know, you'd, you'd always have to communicate. You'd be like, dude, are you in there or not? Come on. So that was something that was super frustrating and it happened to more than one player even after a host migration. So that, that was kind of a, an interesting bug. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out come of here. On. Get in, Torley. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Torley, come on. Come on. Torley, I'm come in. On. Go, go. Torley. He's oh, not he's in. in. He's in, but it doesn't show he's in. Go. Fuck. Oh, shit. You guys are God, awesome. this shit is so fucking irritating. <laughs> Another thing is, I'm worried it'll end up like The Division. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because The Division was pr pretty decent when it came out, you know, leveling up and things like that, but there was a game-breaking bug. Everybody remembers the Bullet King. There was a game-breaking bug that allowed you to get in-game gear easily without having to put in the work to get to the end game content there were glitches to complete you know the uh the missions and things like that to where you wouldn't get attacked and i mean they did their best to patch it but these things really kind of killed that game off when you're trying to you know go into the dark zone in that game and you're just getting ganked left and right because people have crazy high gear because they just you know would grind out that mission without being attacked they got the rewards for it and they could do it over and over and over to get all of the loot and that's unfortunate. Now, I don't think that there's going to be a scoring system like that in Wildlands, at least not that I can see. Uh, and I didn't notice any PvP style mechanic as far as like in our squad. So there may be, there may not be. I'm not entirely sure. I would venture to say there's going to be something, but you know, it may not be in the open world environment. If there is, then kind of think of it like Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption will be a good, a good measure where, you know, you've got people that can just, you know, take you out because they got the buffalo gun. It's kind of the same deal. But we'll see. Um, we didn't play any, you know, anything really other than continue the, the campaign co-op, if you will. We had a lot of fun playing with the guys that we were running with. A few things that I really did enjoy about the game. The open world mechanic of this game, it's a vast world, and we only got to see two provinces, if you will. And that shows off the kind of the scope of the game, the scale of the game. Now, I hope that they just sped up the leveling through these regions just for the beta so people could complete them in a reasonable time. If not, I could see it getting really grindy because a lot of the stuff is kind of the same deal, especially with spotting supply drops, weapon parts, things like that. It's all pretty formulaic. And if you put in the time, you know, that's fine, but it's pretty easy to stick to it, which is good for new gamers, which might be a problem for people who have, you know, are experienced like RPG players, uh, shooters, you know, um, things like that. It can, it can get kind of like, ugh, all right. A few cool things. There's a ton of accessories for the guns. A ton of accessories. You've got all sorts of freaking optics and things like that. They actually have what, well, I don't know if it's licensed or not, but they have some optics in there that look like the Magpul backup sights that I have on my AR-15 and a lot of people run. And then they have, you know, steel, polymer, and other things like that for the sights, and different barrels, and uh, muzzle brake, and uh, fore in grip, and things like that for the rifles. That really kind of gives it an, an era of authenticity. Um, I really do enjoy that. That's something that uh, is, is, is nice and welcome in a, in a game that's, a, you know, a strategic game where you can either go in stealth, or you can go in guns blazing. That's up to the players to ultimately decide how they want to attack missions. You can either go in stealthy, go in Splinter Cell, shoot out lights, go under the cover of darkness like Spec Ops, or you can just say, screw it and John Rambo that bad boy. Now, the thing is, is you want to make sure that everyone that's in your squad is on that same page because there were missions where we had to go in in a certain way and grab one guy in a group of people and somebody would uh, take it upon themselves to go and fire the 
warning shot because they missed and alerted everyone we were there and then the guy escaped in a car and then we had to chase him down and it was just a big cluster. It, it's fun, don't get me wrong, when you're playing with your friends, but at the same time it's just like, oh no, here we go. So that's something that's kind of a, kind of something to keep in mind about it. It's, it's, it's a good game to be played with friends because your friends will keep you on your toes. Some things that need to be absolutely fixed right now. If you're in a helicopter or a vehicle of any description and it's hard to implement a fix, but if you are running towards a helicopter and you want to get in it and you're teammate just decides to grief you because he's being you know a punk and just trying to troll you they'll just you know decimate the helicopter and now your only chance of escape from this region and this firefight is now gone that kind of sucks oh, you're not gonna go camillo no i am go for it you fucking <laughs> asshole <laughs> i had to bro Sorry. i've also had it happen where you know you're in a helicopter flying around and your dude's on the ground, will just start messing around and taking you out. Now that sounds fine and dandy, but if you're partnered up with randoms or something like that, and you're just you know completing objectives, the minute they start getting antsy that maybe their voice isn't being heard, that could cause a whole lot of problems. So I'm kind of hoping that if you're in a party together in the world, that your own party can't take out your, your, your vehicles or crafts because that is a little bit of a pain in the ass to deal with. It's funny, don't get me wrong, but it's a pain in the ass when you're trying to complete the objectives. Other than that, the driving mechanics feel hit or miss. There's a, a minibus that is the most badass off-road vehicle thing I've found so far in the game. That thing just hauls ass over rough terrain. And, you know, it's basically like a, a pre-runner of a core truck just hauling ass through the desert. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> this thing's like a little Baja buggy, dude. I know. I love that, that van. You're, uh... Yeah, you're, you're running really, really... <laughs> Did I just jump? Yeah. <laughs> but some of the other vehicles feel like you are driving on ice all the time and you're not. And the brakes are super touchy and the flight controls... Oh my goodness. The flight controls in the beta are pretty bad. Like, I'd rather, like, they should... They need to come out with, like, an advanced control option. I want Battlefield 4 controls. Uh, the way the helicopter mechanics work, I was hoping for something like Battlefield 4, or like maybe more realistic to a helicopter. If you have your RPM up on the, the prop on the top, you know, when you stop leaning forward, your craft should gain altitude, you know, on, on, on an arc. Doesn't work that way. What I found is if you, you know, you're holding forward and then you let off forward, it'll just kind of stay on that trajectory down. So what you have to do is then, you know, press your S key and tilt it back up and then it gains altitude. Then you have to kind of do this like dolphin dive submarine kind of deal. And it's, it's just stupid. Another thing, I couldn't find a rudder in the airplane. So you have to kind of like fly it all haphazardly to make all your turns. You can't just rudder it, you know, to where you want to go if it's a long arcing turn. And again, those controls are touchy on keyboards. So it's, I tried mouse flying with the planes and everything like that. Nothing really worked well. That's something to keep in mind, you know, if you're thinking about the game, the controls are still, it's still beta, so the controls are gonna hopefully be polished out and reworked and touched up and things like that. Uh, the rifles, like the assault rifles, uh, the M416, the TAR, I don't know if the developers have ever shot those guns, but the bullets travel a lot faster and they don't drop as rapidly as they do in the game. Now, I'm okay with the bullet drop in the game because it's a game, and I, you know, I understand that. But, please, please make the velocity on these rounds faster. They shoot like you're shooting a 22. I mean, they are just... Dink, dink, and it's... And you're shooting at things, you know, 25 yards from you. It's... It's crazy, right? This is a crappy mechanic, and I want to feel that, you know, two, two, three, five, five, six, NATO round. I want to, like, the round to feel like I'm actually shooting my AR. I mean, and that's the thing that even Battlefield, it's not as fast as the real guns, but it's better. It balances that line of arcade and simulation, if you will. And with Ghost Recon, I mean, all the other Ghost Recons were really tactical. You know, you had to you had to plan out your, your motives and you had to choose the right loadout for the missions. And these things, I feel like, I mean, it's beta, again, but I feel like maybe it's not there, and it should be, because that's a big part of the game. So far, I mean, I would give it a solid, you know, a B, 
grade, you know, probably like an 82% positive. There's some things in it that just need to work, and it's a, it's a beta, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. What they need to do early on is be involved with the community and patch things that are game-breaking. Please do not let this turn into another division. Please. Please don't let that happen. Other than that, it's a beautiful game. Uh, the gunplay is great. I really do enjoy the gunplay. There are some caveats, though. That's my two cents on this. Take it with a grain of salt. Uh, I appreciate you guys, all your support, your feedback. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please share it, like it, comment, all that jazz. Thank you guys, and I'll see you later.